Okay, so symmetry um, is exactly what it sounds like. Um, for the first four, we're just going to look at line asymmetry. It says state whether the figure appears to have line symmetry, write yes or no. If so, draw lines of symmetry and state the number of lines of symmetry. So number one, um, I see a line of symmetry here. And what a line of symmetry means is that if you drew this line, it would be the exact same on both sides. Same measurements, same angles, same everything. You could like fold it on top of itself. Right, Paxton? Mm, yes, of course. Okay, draw that. Okay. <laughs> Um, this figure has more than one line of symmetry. Any regular um, polygon with the same side lengths and the same angles um, will have more than one. For a triangle, it will have three. So you could draw a line here, and it's the same on both sides. You could also draw a line here, and it's the same on both sides. So yes, it has line symmetry. And how many does it have? It has three. I just said yes, three. So for a regular polygon, it's going to be based on the number of sides. That's how many lines of symmetry it's going to have, or the number of angles, which is the same number. Number two. Um, this looks like a parallelogram. I try to draw a line of symmetry. Maybe I'll draw one right here. You'll notice that it really won't fold on top of itself. If you folded this over here, it would stick out like that. Or if you drew like a line of symmetry here, again, it wouldn't like reflect onto itself. So this is no, no line of symmetry. Number three, it looked like it looks like it might. It definitely wouldn't be here, obviously, um, but it looks like it might have a line of symmetry here. Um, but when you draw that line, you might notice that this angle is a 90 degree angle and this one is not a 90 degree angle. So therefore, it really wouldn't reflect right on top of itself. So no for this one. Number four, um, you could draw a line here and it would reflect onto itself. So yes, it does have line symmetry. Um, you could also draw a line here and it would reflect onto itself. So it has two lines of symmetry. Uh, oh, crap. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of what you learned in elementary school. Now we're going to kick it up a notch a little bit. This is state whether the figure has rotational symmetry. Um, right, yes or no. If so, locate the center of symmetry, state the order, and the magnitude. Um, so rotational symmetry is when you can rotate it onto itself. Now any shape you could rotate 360 degrees um, and it would rotate onto itself. So specifically talking about like less than 360 degrees to rotate onto itself. So for example, with number five, the center of rotation is right here. Um, to rotate it onto itself, you could like rotate it one turn here. What are they looking for? So yes, it has rotational symmetry. And yes, I'm writing it out so we remember the words better. And the order, it's talking about like the number of times it would rotate onto itself. Yeah, two, well, three if you go all the way around. So One. three. Three. Three is okay. the order. And then magnitude of rotation. So if you rotate it all the way around, it would be 360 degrees. Um, but what we're going to do is do 360 divided by three. And that's the amount of degrees you would have to rotate it for it to rotate onto itself. 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. So your magnitude is 120 degrees. Okay, and number 6. The center is right here. That was easy to find. Um, then does it have rotational symmetry? Yes, you could rotate it just like one little turn here. and it would land on top of itself. So yes to rotational symmetry. The order. So how many like little spikes does it have? Let's go ahead and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, it sure is eight. Then the magnitude of rotation. 360 divided by 8, 
And does that come out? Yep, it comes out to 45 degrees. So if you rotated the shape 45 degrees, it would land on top of itself. That's cool. Yep. Okay, number seven. Uh, this one, you could almost do it without the math. Yeah, it's 180. If you rotate it 180 degrees, it would rotate onto itself. So yes to rotational symmetry. Remember, I'm writing this out just to help learn the vocabulary and get it to stick in your mind. And then the order, it has like two spikes, so two. And then for magnitude of rotation, 360 divided by two, and you get 180 degrees. And then number eight, as you may predict, it does not have rotational symmetry. Um, you could make the center of rotation right here, but you'd have to rotate it 360 degrees for it to be on itself. You could also say like this, you'd have to rotate it 360 degrees. So no, no rotational symmetry. Okay, so different kind of symmetry here. State whether the figure has plane symmetry, axis symmetry, both or neither. What are they talking about here? Plane is like when you slice it, if it's the same on both sides. Um, so when I think of plane, I think about like literally slicing it with a plane, and if it's the same on both sides, it has plane symmetry. So like the way I would draw this is like drawing a plane. What's that, Drew? What? Is the power low on my, what'd you say? I feel like it was important, okay. So if I was to draw a plane, it would slice it exactly in half. So yes to plane symmetry. And then axis symmetry. What are they talking about there? Um, the axis would be like in the center here. And if it has axis symmetry, it can rotate onto itself without going all the way around. So for this square pyramid, it could rotate 90 degrees and be on itself. So yes to axis symmetry. What's the difference between axis symmetry and rotational symmetry? Um, axis symmetry is in a 3D shape. That's the difference. But it's rotational symmetry. And then number 10. Again, draw the plane. Would a plane slice this exactly in half? Yes to plane symmetry. I wish there was a way to abbreviate this, but I don't think there is. And then, yes. was that PS? I don't know. That just makes me think of PlayStation. <laughs> PlayStation. PlayStation. Plane symmetry and then axis symmetry. If you were to draw like an axis through the center, could you rotate it onto itself without going all the way around? Yes, you could. So it has axis symmetry as well. And then we're gonna do the other side as well. Nope, we're just doing these two. And then the dilations is tomorrow's lesson. Okay, so number one, write yes or no. If so, draw all lines of symmetry and state their number. Okay, so does this have line symmetry? I can draw a line right here and it's the exact same on both sides. So yes, it has line symmetry. How many? Just one, one line of symmetry. All right, Paxton? Yeah, yeah. Write that down, okay. Then the next one, drawing line of symmetry, maybe draw one here. Is it the same on both sides? Yes, it is. If I draw one here, it is also the same on both sides. So yes, and it has two lines of symmetry. Number three, I try maybe here, nope. Here, nope. No, no lines of symmetry. Okay, number four, state whether the figure has rotational symmetry, right, yes or no. If so, locate the center of symmetry, state the order and the magnitude. OK, 
Okay, so the first one's like a rectangle. Um, rectangle would be, 180. yeah, 180. So yes to rotational symmetry. I don't know if you can abbreviate rotational symmetry. Um, the center of rotation would be right here. The order would be two. And then the magnitude would be 360 divided by two, which is 180 degrees. Then number five, yes to rotational symmetry. The order one, two, three, four, five. So the order is five. And then the magnitude of rotation would be 180 divided by five, which I believe comes out to 360. Oh, why did you? Sorry, 360. I don't know why I wrote 180. 360 divided by five, and you get 72, 72. degrees. And then number six, yes, again, to rotational symmetry. The order, you gotta go around and count all these, two, three, four, five. Yep, 16, and magnitude is 360 divided by 16, and it comes out to a decimal this time, but that's all right, 22.5 degrees. Number seven, now state whether it has plane symmetry, axis symmetry, both or neither. Okay, so for number seven, remember plane is when you like slice it with a plane and if it's the same on both sides, then it has plane symmetry. So I'm kind of like visualizing slicing this in half and yes, it would slice it exactly in half. So yes to plane symmetry. And then axis symmetry, that's when you have like a line, an axis in the middle. Can you rotate it on it to itself without going all the way around? And yes, you can rotate it 180 degrees. So yes to axis symmetry. And number eight, um, does it have axis symmetry? Actually, it's one of them. It's not axis symmetry, so no axis. And then plane, when I was thinking plane, I was thinking this way, um, but that wouldn't work because you have a 90 degree angle and something else over here, so that wouldn't work. But if you slice it this way, you can slice it exactly in half. So it does have plane symmetry. So, um, not every. I don't know. I'm sure you could. I'm sure there's things I don't like, okay. some kind of like wobbly shape like that. No, maybe if it's like a wall, it has to be somewhat thick, so then you split it. Yeah, but it, like, it could be different thickness on it. How thick is it all? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, number nine, an actual like real life that you'll never really see in real life. Um, if a paddle wheel consists of 18 evenly spaced paddles, that's important, identify the order and magnitude of its rotational symmetry. Okay, so the order would be 18 for each paddle. And then magnitude is 360 divided by 18. And that would be 20 degrees. Okay, so easy lesson. The homework is just as easy, especially since the homework has some of these problems on it. Um, when you're done with the homework though, there are two lessons on Khan Academy for reflective symmetry and rotational. Um, they kind of take it up a notch from this. This, I feel like it's too easy for like the EOC. They're going, if they ask you about this stuff, they'll make it a little bit harder. Khan Academy has problems that are a little bit harder that would be better representation of what's on like standardized testing. So once you're done with the homework, go on to Khan Academy and do those lessons. And if you have problems, questions with those, ask me. Um, the laptops, I don't know if they work or not, and I don't want to trip my internet. So you can use your phones, but make sure to use them to get your homework done and Khan Academy. Miss. And if you'd like to use a laptop, you can. <laughs>